Good afternoon, everybody. Lynn, the leather bag lady here. How are you all today? Oh, hot flash. Why is it whenever I talk to you folks, I get a hot flash? Oh my God. Oh, sweat. Oh my God, it's so gross. Anyway, how are you all today? It's Monday today. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. Saturday was amazing. 29 degrees, leather bag lady weather report. Yesterday, it pissed from the heavens. And today, it's a real Scottish day today. Very misty, rainy. It's not that cold, 15, 16 degrees, but it's kind of crap out. Um, my clients, we didn't really do much today. They went to the pub. They had a pint or... Well, they asked for a pint and a half, but we go to the same pub all the time. So the girl that serves us gave them a little bit more. I don't know if that was a good idea. I almost had to carry both of them to the car. <laughs> anyway, they have fun. They had fun. So got a few things to cover today. So let's start. I've got two bags again for you. Um, the first one, I think. I think I listed it Saturday. I'm not sure. The, the week, the because my weeks are um, not regular right now because of this, that, and the other thing, I'm all over the place. So I think it was listed Saturday, but I didn't do a video for it. So I will do that bag first. Nice, nice bag. Just a very simple black denier leather. Now, for any of you who are new to my channel or watching this bag specifically linked to Etsy because you like the bag, um, Danier is a Canadian brand, um, been around for a lot of years. I think it was 1972, uh, Montreal-based uh, company. Their leather is excellent. Vintage leather is excellent. I've talked about this a lot. Their new stuff, I wouldn't take it if you gave it to me for free. I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. It's garbage compared to what it used to be. A good vintage Danier bag. I sold a beautiful one last week or the week before, red. You can't beat it. You just cannot beat the vintage Danier. So this is, um, I've put this as an 80s bag. There's no, no um, foam pockets or anything like that. There's your Danier leather sign or your tag. There is a zipper in here and just a simple, simple daily driver bag. Little bit of an accent here. They've kind of pinched the edges. You know, just a little something to give it a little bit of visual interest. Um, there is one little area of issue, and it's it's not a huge issue. It's just a little bit of the leather has, I mean, it's 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 not separated, like it's not come apart altogether. It's just because it's quite wrinkled here, it's just lifting. And I mean, that's as much as it's lifting. But again, as I always tell you, I would rather give you a heads up than you get your bag and think A, that I'm trying to pull the wool over your eyes and B, that you don't want it anymore because there's a little bit of a damage. So, I mean, these bags are all pushing 30, 40, 50 years old. So I realized quite recently, because normally I would change my bags every other day, every three days, every four days. But I've just kind of gotten sick of having to do that. So I've been sticking with the same bag for more than I would normally do. And wow, how easily they dry or damage, especially in these corners. So I have a whole new appreciation for when I get my bags and I see that there's little to no wear on these bags at all. I look after my things and I'm not particularly hard on my uh, leather goods, but if I can do a little bit of damage after a month or two or three, then, I mean, these bags that are vintage, you know, they, it's amazing that they've made it this far. So that's bag number one. Again, it was listed on Saturday and I'm now just doing the video for it today. Bag number two, I really, really like this bag. 
there's really nothing to it. It's a, I'm, la I'm labeling it as a 70s. It's very, you know, like the, you see them all the time in the thrift stores and they're not leather. They're like that plastic pleather stuff. And there are like 70s um, carry-on bags. So that's kind of what this looks like, but it is leather. So I'm pretty sure that it, a man or a woman could use this bag. Um, no identifiable branding or anything. There is a zipper compartment inside, a zipper outside, and then a little snap. And this is very 70s too, this kind of snap. Um, there is a shoulder, one of these little shoulder things, which again lends itself very, very easily to being a travel bag. Great crossbody. Um, it will go even just a couple of inches longer. I think, um, what is it? It's 10 inches wide, 11 and a half inches long. And the strap drop is about a 23 inch strap drop. So I am going to try and remember to give you that extra bit of information. Just, you know, just keep trying to give you as much information as you need to be able to make the decision that you want to make to purchase a bag or not. So I really like this one. It's simple, 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 but it screams vintage to me. And that, after all, if you're buying a vintage bag, why would you not want it to scream what it actually is? So there you go. That's bag number two. So um, have a little bit of uh, another installment in my bag history um, listing. And I'm going to give you it because it kind of ties me into another bag and another issue that I am having. So we've done 1969, 1970. Um, if you want to hear what that uh, is all about, it was in my previous video. So 1971 was kind of the real introduce, introduction of patent leather. So patent leather in vintage is really, really hard to sustain. It does tend to get sticky. And I've had many, many patent leather bags and they do have a sticky it's all, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I do have bags or I have had bags where the uh, lining, it's like a coated fabric and that can get very sticky. But the other thing that is problematic with patent bags in my experience is they mark very, very easily. So this leads me to this latest bag. So this is a great little bag. It's a Canadian made uh, Roel, made in Canada. Now, this little bag, unfortunately, was just purchased. And then I went to grab it to ship it this morning. And I realized that in my storage efforts, it has taken on some of the color of the bag that was beside it so I am going to uh, I have already contacted the buyer offered him a 50% discount if he does still want the bag if not obviously I will refund um, but this is a bit of a lesson for me I do know that the bags have to be stored in a temperature sensitive environment because when the humidity gets high the leather can sometimes get tacky, especially this patent stuff. And anything that's butt up against it, color will transfer. So my mistake, I usually, I keep all my white bags, my light bags together. The bag that is the culprit for this was white, but has two brown stripes down it. And that is where the color transfer has come from. So lesson to me, I think from now on, all my white bags, I'm going to put them in plastic bags. I put them in plastic bags anyway when I ship them, just obviously to protect them if there's any moisture or anything like that. Um, 
I mean, they're stored in my house, so they're not out in an outbuilding or anything like that. But I do have a dehumidifier running in my house all the time, and I'm thinking I'm going to put that dehumidifier in my stock room because I think that could be um, part of my issue. So I haven't heard back from the customer yet, so I don't know what he would like to do. It is only on one side. There's nothing of, uh, I mean, it's such a great little bag. It's got the little hideaway uh, top handle, and then there's a really cute um, metal strap as well. So hopefully we can still find this little beauty a home. Um, it's just so frustrating. But you know what? You learn. Even just this weekend, yesterday, I did a show. <laughs> not one customer, not one person even looking at the bags. So it gave me a kick in the ass to kind of get cracking on a project that I've been kind of working on, kind of, sort of. I don't know when I turned into such a chicken shit, but I just am, I just have a hard time making decisions about stuff these days. And I don't, I don't know why. I'm ne I've never been like that before. But um, anyway, so this little guy hopefully will still be going uh, off to the States. Uh, if not, you know, last thing I want to do is send a bag off to somebody who isn't happy with it. So, yeah, really frustrating. But that's it. So this is kind of a pattern, like the, the mock uh, reptile. Just... Uh, Ties in with my our 1971 little piece of bag history. So there we are. That's it for today. Um, what am I doing? What just happened? I just heard something fall. I'm losing my mind. I am absolutely losing my mind. Ah, oh well, whatever. I'll find it. I lo I pulled in my earring out. The second little one. And I found the back, but I can't find the front. When do you ever do that? Usually the back's the one that goes missing, but... Oh, well, maybe I'll find it one fine day. Anyway, everybody, hope you're having a fantastic day. Hopefully my attitude gets better as the day goes on. I'm not sure about that. My teeth are hurting. My dentist appointment last week. I'm, gonna ha I'm going back tomorrow, and it could be root canals. I've got, like... All my back teeth are root canaled. It must be something in my genetic makeup or something. But, oh, my goodness me. I think that's what woke me up a few times last night. So I'm tired and I'm grumpy and I'm not myself today. So, anyway, on that positive note, I will love you and leave you, as my mom says. And I will talk to you tomorrow, hopefully in a little bit of a better attitude. Okay, bye, everybody.